Under old business, I thought we would bring up about um, last week and the budget committee. I purposely did not bring it up last week to uh, engage further because Mr. Bridal wasn't here. And um, I thought that we should go over oh, okay. uh, the what is the plan of the board, even though we've been doing it all last year and this year. So, Mr. Bean, I thought we'd ask you to open this up. Well, sure. Um, and last week it got a little tempestuous over this, and uh, Selectman Wolsey talks about, um, um, you know, minutes and procedures with committees, and rightfully so. And uh, as, as she stepped aside from the budget committee, it was, it was my turn, my turn. And uh, there was uh, a request for a report by the Selectman's representative, which is what I gave. I talked a little bit about the budget history last year. Uh, the remarks are on cable. Uh, it were talked about uh, essentially command and leadership that selectmen provide. Talked about lines of communication, simplicity, the unity of command, the economy of uh, our resources. And uh, essentially all of that really does lead to what Mr. Pierce is doing tonight and, and does divulge and expose full transparency. Uh, I spoke prior to that meeting with both the town manager in his office and Mr. Griffin at his uh, business and discussed those exact lines of communication, whereas legal and assessing report to the Board of Selectmen, all of the departments report to Mr. Welch. Uh, there was agreement by both Mr. Welch and the town manager uh, and Mr. Uh, Griffin. Um, and. It essentially is that the operational and administrative control over those departments lies with both Mr. Welch and Mr. Griffin and the board. Uh, again, uh, by instituting those information requests, both from the boards uh, to the Board of Selectmen and to Mr. Welch, I think you can enhance the budget process. I think you can have a better budget process. There are some 50 people that are on these boards and committees here. We have 50 board and committee members calling uh, different department heads at any one time, even during the week, uh, because our folks are so responsive, it does tend to tie things up. And I think when you have board members asking questions they were asking of the planning board, I think that Mr. Waddell would need to know and it would go through him. It has been my implicit and explicit understanding that's how this board wished to function. So I say here again tonight with a full board, whatever the chairs and whatever the board's preference is, um, I'm happy to follow it. And I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And Mr. Welch, um, how is it that you understand that process about uh, the, the employees going to the different committees? My, and I talked to the Chairman of the Budget Committee about this. My understanding is that the <coughs> Chairman of the Budget Committee would ask the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, the Selectmen would then consider it if that needed to be, uh, and would pass it down to those who were involved. As a Selectman function, I, I the liaison between the, the, uh, the Chairman of the Budget Committee and the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen is the liaison, and, and that would normally go through the, the Selectman's selected liaison to that particular committee. So there would be that route going, going around that circle and coming back and forth each, each of you. And from that, there would be either dissemination to this board or there would be instruction from uh, that group for individuals to do whatever was necessary to carry out the functions that were being talked about. And so do you feel that it's more important for the employees to go like after the summer when the budget has started moving or you've mentioned in the past about people having a certain amount of time there or whatever. Well, right now is probably the worst time of the year for any of us to be going anywhere. I, I have up to, for summer. I, I do have to, con you know, to, to consider that. Um, I know, for instance, Ed was just here a minute ago. He's in the middle of a reval. Um, during the day, he's frequenting my office and tearing his hair out and trying to get help to do different things. The guy is just going crazy. 
Uh, I have the same problem. I've had public works in here three times today on different matters. Uh, and, and it on it goes to all the various departments, recreation and so, police, fire, everybody. Um, they're very, very busy, and that won't slacken off until we actually get into the budget detail, which will be the budget message is going out next week. Uh, they'll start working on that whole whole spectrum of things between that warrant articles between now and the time it goes to the Board of Selectmen, which will be sometime in the early or late summer, early fall. Um, I'm keeping them, at least the folks that report to me, very, very, very busy at the moment. Uh, and there are a number of occasions uh, where I am being told where people are requesting things repeatedly not necessarily from a particular board or committee, but uh, taking time up uh, away from what they should be doing for the entire town. That happens. Um, we try to discourage that or try to get the things done quickly as possible. So I think it, uh, a level of command on the select board is important so that you have some consistency on what's going on and you can control that because I think that's the board's function. Um, I just try to make sure my department heads get their work done, and that's difficult this time of the year. And I under—I'm not really sure. Uh, although I've watched all the budget committee meetings, um, but I'm not really clear on whether they're planning on meeting during the summer. But I know in the past they haven't. Um, I don't have a schedule. Yeah, so I haven't heard if they're gonna. But I have talked to some of the people on the budget committee, and they—they they seem to be under the impression that there probably won't be that many meetings in the summer. And there are some people that are feel that the different parts of the committee that they're responsible to, uh, for instance, the precinct, uh, they don't really need to be there all the time. Um, so, you know, and they're very busy during the summer. That's their big time. So They don't have any meetings during yeah. the summer. So, so uh, at this time of the year, I'm really not clear how, you know, if... It is so important, especially when everyone is busy. Um, questions, Mr. Waddell. I, I just think that uh, it, a line of command is, is important, and I think it's important that if we have representatives to the various committees, that the, that the committees go through those representatives. And I think it's important that the department heads and the, and the, uh, the employees are doing their jobs that they're supposed to be doing for the town. And uh, it, it's... It becomes counterproductive if everybody, I mean, it becomes so counterproductive that I've heard my name thrown around that I said this and I said that and then I took it back and that what the heck are we talking about? It was a surprise to me. It was a surprise to me too. I was really surprised, but that's all right. It doesn't bother me. But I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens when you start to go this way. If you have a chain of command, you have a representative, you have, if the board of selectmen are the, uh, the, uh, employees or the uh, in charge of those employees then it should come through the board of selectmen and we had discussed that prior to that that the representatives were going to do that so i think that that's very important and uh, I, I agree 100 percent that it should it should be a line of command that it should go that way and that's how we were operating last year yeah not just this year mr Br uh, bridal well, i totally agree i think that uh that it makes a smoother operation if they they come to, if if there are if we're responsible for those employees and they come through us if the town manager is responsible then they can still come through our, our representative that's on that board whichever board it is if, if the planning board has some some information then they, they should come through Jim if it's the budget committee then they should come through Phil and I think that's uh, I think it's going to be smoother cleaner uh, we can get a lot more done a lot more productive you know we're told all the time we got to do uh, more with less well our department heads are trying the best they can with more with less uh, and to to put other information on them when they have other jobs that they need to get done I think uh, is counterproductive so I think I think uh, it should come through our selectmen's representatives that are on those boards whichever committee it is so we do seem to have a consensus that this, um, I'm still going to let you speak, Mrs. Wolseley, but we do seem to have a consensus that this is the way it was done last year and this year. And um, so I just want to say that. And what about, what would you like to say? 
the way it was done last year was that Mr. Waddell was the representative. There were constant complaints about the Municipal Budget Committee. I don't remember Mr. Waddell coming to us for any one of the meetings related to who was appearing before the Municipal Budget Committee. I have been elected to the Municipal Budget Committee in the Town of Hampton seven times. I have served as Chairman of the Budget Committee. I have served as Select Man Representative to the Budget Committee. I have served as a regular what a member of the committee. What I will say to you is this. I asked this board to get together in public with the planning board. I have the memo from Mr. Uh, uh, Welch talking about uh, subjects that we need to discuss with the planning board. And in the minutes of April 13th, Selectman Waddell said the planning board is an elected board voted on by the voters. They have specific things they're supposed to deal with, and they do. If we have questions, they should give me, be given to me as a representative. I don't see one board telling another board what to do. I want you to think about this. May I, may I respond to this? You just quoted let, me. Let her speak, yeah. and I want to respond to it too because I have part of this because I've already done yeah. this last year. So we will let her say all she wants to Thank say. Thank you. That is very kind of you. The municipal budget law is RSA 32. There is no stipulation in that law that requires the chairman of the budget committee to go through anyone, and the chairman of the budget committee controls that committee with their consent. St RSA 32 colon 16 Roman 2 says that the it doesn't tell the budget committee how to conduct business, but it says that their mission is to confer with the governing body or bodies and with other officers, department heads, and other officials relative to estimated costs, revenues anticipated, and services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the Budget Committee. <coughs> it shall be the duty of all such officers and of the persons to furnish such pertinent information to the Budget Committee." End quote. A representative to the Budget Committee from this board or the precinct commissioners or the school board is a conduit. It, it, it's a go. The person is, is a gopher. You go to the meetings. You are a legitimate voting member of the budget committee. You participate. You answer questions from the members of the committee. If requested, you can bring in material to share, or you can take back requests to your board, which has happened in the past. I have never ever, in all the time I have been doing this, seen a chairman of the Municipal Budget Committee undercut by some members of the Board of Selectmen. The chairman of the Budget Committee has the authority to run that committee. I came to you after all the complaints and all the uproars last year and the relationship with the Budget Committee needed to be mended a little bit. I think we agreed with that. I told all of you exactly what I had in mind. I told all of you that I was willing to take up, because I have experience, take up the, the burden of uh, working with the Budget Committee. And in an effort to try to calm things down between the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen, I, I suggested to the Chairman, and I told you that, that she might want to do a non-controversial meeting as a kickoff for the new year. Who is, who is less controversial than the assessing officer? I said, with the reval coming up, and it is important, and it is only April, and the reval is just starting, she checked with him within a day or two of that meeting in March. She coordinated with him. Coordinated with him. If you are new approach to working with the Budget Committee and any other, like the Planning Board, is to have the specific individual report to this board, fine, but none of us has any business interfering directly with the Budget Committee, specifically with the Chairman of the Budget Committee. That is out of line, and that was done without my knowledge. I am the easiest person in this town to find. 
I have had the same phone number for 51 years. A crummy little message on my answering machine might suffice, but I will tell you that I think, A, what was done is illegal. I think it's illegal for some members of this committee, this board to act without myself, and I can't speak for what Rusty might have known, but when I spoke with Ed Tinker last Thursday, I was told directly, I said, who told you this? Who pulled the assessing officer from the agenda the afternoon of the meeting? Okay. Point no. of order here, Mrs. No. Wolseley. Point of order. Point of order here. We are discussing yes. what is the policy of this board. This is the policy, not but this the year. But the policy of this board, board Mrs. can't, Wolseley, can't it's, I am talking with now. the statute. Mrs. Wolseley, is, I am talking. And you told me I have the time to talk now, oh, and I, I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to talk and finish my comments here. Okay. We have no authority in any way, shape, or form to interfere with the budget committee. Interfere to pull a guest speaker before the budget committee, and yes, he does work for the board of selectmen to pull that person without the knowledge of the entire board and without contacting the chairman of the budget committee. I will tell you that I would pay money to hear the telephone conversation between a representative from this board and the chairman of the budget committee if she were called on Tuesday afternoon and told, we're not going to let the assessing officer go to your meeting tonight. You've wasted a whole meeting for the budget committee. You wasted the whole April meeting for the budget committee. And I will say that I, I say to you that it is illegal to do any of this. Whoever you want to report to who, it is illegal for you to do any of this behind my back. You could call, you could call a meeting. If you had called a meeting, Rusty was out of, out of the state, if you had called a meeting, there were three of you and one of me, and if you wanted to try voting and saying we're going to pull the assessing officer, I would have been outvoted. But I say to you, and I would like, Mr. I will say that we have counsel here, and I believe it is absolutely illegal, A, to do this behind my back, and B, to interfere with a, an individual who's booked on to speak to the Budget Committee. If you want to say in subsequent Mrs. months, Wilson. if you want to say in subsequent months, don't call the, don't call the police chief, don't call the fire chief, or you can't have them till such and such a month, you can try it. But the language of the statute is crystal okay, clear. Okay, you've had your say, Mrs. Wilson. Crystal Wesley. clear. The thing is, obviously, you just don't understand because you oh, don't realize we did this all last year. No, you didn't do it all last year. When did I'm you do sorry, this last I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilson. We did. I said Last here. year, when I was the one that invited the uh, planning board, they have no interest in coming here. Well, that's fine, but we're not talking about the planning board. No, you board. just mentioned about the planning board, and Mr. Waddell... You said about Ms. interfering... Mrs. Walsley, you've okay. had your time. Please, you are out of line again. Now, Mr. Waddell, would you like to speak? Well, you know, uh, it, we're, we're just beating a dead horse here. We, we went through this all last week. We're going to go through it again. If somebody feels it's illegal, then they should do whatever they need to do, and that's all I have to say. Okay, and now we will ask the, the lawyer, the town the lawyer. esquire... Mrs. Wilson, please. Okay, the budget committee operates within a certain context. That context is developing a budget. But the way this town does it, as so many others do, is the manager develops a budget, it's passed to the selectmen, and then it goes to the budget committee. Right. And so that's the way it's always been done and is proper. What the budget committee, and I've listened to their their uh, minutes as well, is proposing is to have a group of committees that will be roving throughout the departments in the town and thereby, whenever they deem they want to, come and uh, have the department head be involved. That's no way to run a railroad. The budget committee is not the town and it's not the town manager. Their approach, as it seems to me, is to try to essentially act in your role or the town manager's role. We have just gotten a budget in March, the, what, the budget we have to live with for the year, and the budget committee is already starting in with these committees, which is several years ago, they met during the summer. And we're, we're in on this approach of getting into the weeds operationally with the departments. 
which is disturbing. We had department heads that last year spent hours in front of the budget committee. They voted our budgets. And then what they did in the last half hour of the last meeting was to undo it. And it appears that our entire time last year was wasted. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, that's not exactly answering a legal question, but I'm answering to you what the perception is, I believe, of the department heads who were put through this. And now the, the, the budget committee proposes to meet during the summer with these committees, come to the departments, and essentially, it looks like, interfere with operations. There needs to be a control. Yes, there are all these uh, obligations under the right to know, under the uh, mm -hmm. budget committee law to confer with the budget committee to, um, to supply information to the budget committee but there operationally has to be a way to do that in an appropriate manner. And that is what Mr. Bean communicated quite clearly to the budget committee. They may not like it, but that's operationally what the manager needs to do, and I think what this, this board needs to do in order to run the town. And that, I think there's an, an accommodation. There are not merely these unfettered obligations under the budget law. I believe also there's some consideration for operational matters. And uh, this board, uh, running two of the departments directly, my own and the assessors, I think has a voice in how those uh, departments interact and how we appear. Otherwise, we won't get our jobs done. And the, this manager uh, is in charge of the departments. So I think the um, Mr. Bean has accurately put forth to the Budget Committee what the line of communication is. He didn't say we're not going to give you the information we're looking for. He set up a framework where they could get it. And I would just like to say that, and I'm not blaming um, Mrs. Um, Latimer, because uh, I know that she worked hard to do it. Um, but she didn't, no one contacted me as a, as a member of the board of, uh, as the chairman um, about it at all. Uh, and at my time with talking with Phil was just to affirm that this has been the way that we have done it. And uh, I would like to just say that um, do we need to make a motion, or is a consensus enough that this is what, how we did it last year and this year? We plan to do it this way again. I th or do I we think, need a motion? I think the specific operationally, because it, it, it directly involves two of the departments you operate, and also uh, the manager's role, it would be helpful to uh, affirm that the approach Mr. Bean has indicated to the Budget Committee is the representative of what a majority of this board feels is appropriate. Okay, and I would just like to also say that uh, if there are times when Mr. Bean isn't able to go to the um, uh, budget committee, Mr. Bridal is the alternate, and he will gladly fill in at any time. So I would just like to point that out there. So uh, did you want to make a motion? I have a question for council. Feel free. Is it legally acceptable for some members of this five-member board to order an employee of this board to not appear before budget committee on the day of the actual committee meeting, when that meeting and his appearance was scheduled for a whole month ahead of time. First of all, I question the legality of leaving out at least one member of this board with that decision. Any decision, but in this particular instance, I believe it was flagrant. And I think if the policy of this board <laughs> needs to be stated, that we will do whatever with the budget committee. I have no problem with your statement about these committees and running around. You can't have people running around and disrupting departments. I agree with that. This was a single individual who had been booked on for the entire month. We understand. Well, you don't understand because you, you can't keep going 
behind my back. Point of order, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Just a point of order. And just 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 a point of order, Mr. Chairman. Right to know. May I have a point of order? And equally in your response, uh, Councillor, could you please address if it is not appropriate to um, assert a customary practice endorsed by the board and department heads? Uh, conversely, um, what right does one member have to schedule that employee, that being Mrs. Woolsey, the month before she quit the budget committee? I didn't schedule him. Thank you. Mrs. I suggested Latimer said that you don't have the full floor, I Mrs. I told every one of you when you, you spent the whole. You don't have the floor, Mrs. Woolsey. Too bad. I yes, told it is too all bad. of you Mrs. when you spent the whole last year complaining about the budget You committee. are out of line, Mrs. Wolseley. Well, I you think are I out have of reason line. to be annoyed. You are out of line. I say what you did is illegal. We, illegal. You are out of line. Illegal. We are here to do the town's business. If you'd like to be part of this board, you're always welcome. You are out of line now, and do we have a motion? I want to hear <laughs> council's answer, please. I thought you gave it to her. Uh, I heard it. I, I said what yeah, I think I this, this board, it would be helpful if this board would, would, uh, would vote to indicate that as Mr. Bean has articulated your approach to having people that work for you and work for the manager uh, be coming to the budget committee's meeting that, that this board uh, so indicate. What about 91A? I so move. I second it. All those in favor, unanimous. Oh, it's oh, not I mean, unanimous. Four to and one. I want an are answer. Are you against it or are you uh, I am abstaining? I'm opposed. I am opposed. Okay, and so I that want, is 4 1. I want an answer, please, from council. Mrs. Wilson, you've got your answer. I don't have an answer. I would like an answer from council on not including a member or possibly Mrs. members. Mrs. Wilson, we're not going to beat a dead horse decision. here. We are it's going to move on horse. to business. Well, then you need to it's, take it up with the attorney on your own time. It's the law. You can no, take care I of this. No, I think I can ask council in public. He's here, and I'd like to ask council. You already have asked him. And I have not a, re a reply under 91A. Is Do you every have member else to of say? this board entitled Mr. to Gerald. the same information? I think whenever whenever an attorney is asked a legal opinion that's directed toward a certain outcome, it's important to know all of the facts. The facts, is, as I heard them last week when you conferred on this subject, were that Mr. Bean had been given the authority as the board's representative to uh, direct the uh, responses of this board to the budget committee. That's what I heard last week. When was that vote taken? Somebody that's, show me that in the minutes. When was it that was vote a consensus taken? for the whole last year? That's how we operated, no, Mrs. No, Wilson. no, 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 no. You're deliberately taking a vote on this now. Oh, we are now because you're causing uh, some issues I am here. Not you don't. You didn't complain all last year when it worked this way. I, no, it didn't okay, work this Mrs. way. Okay, Mrs. Wilson, we're I, moving on. No, we are moving on. No, you Mrs. are not. Mrs. Wilson, we are moving on. You have on. not included me in the discussion in this particular instance, and that is a violation. We of just discussed. It. You had your chance it's to a, say. It's a and, violation of the okay. statute. You don't understand that you have. There's I, been a motion made and you voted against it. Yes, I okay. did. Okay. That's all yes, there I is did. to it, Mrs. And Wilson. what happens next when you're doing something and you're not notifying me? Where do we go then? Mrs. Wolseley, you oh. seem to have a. There are. That's all right. It's we're all moving playing on. Out in we the have other time. business to do, That's Mrs. Wolseley. Go and right your ahead. assertions that other things are going on you are never absolutely notified wrong. me as chairman of this board. Never. And your job as chairman is to manage the entire board. Mrs. Yeah. Wolsey, I thought you were paying attention last year when you were here. But oh, we will I think now.